Let's go over the Spark SQL module for processing structured data, highlighted in blue. Before we proceed, however, it is worthwhile to go over different types of data. There are three different types, structured, semi-structured, and unstructured. Structured data sources provide most information about the underlying data by defining a schema on that data, enabling efficient storage and performance. For example, columnar formats such as optimized row column or ORC and parquet make it much easier to extract values from a subset of columns rather than reading all rows before extracting the values of interest. This saves time and computation. And row storage formats such as Avro efficiently serialize and stores data, providing storage benefits at the cost of flexibility due to rigid structure. And evolving a schema can prove challenging. By contrast, unstructured data sources are generally text or binary objects that contain no markup or metadata to define the organization of that data. Articles, images, all types of application logs and records are often treated as unstructured data. These sources generally require some context to be parsable. That is, you need additional information to know how to handle it. For example, whether it's a news article or an image blob. Dealing with those data sources is generally time consuming since it requires a lot of pre-work to make them useful. Finally, semi-structured data sources have local schema generally on a per-record basis. XML and JSON formats are popular examples. The biggest benefit of semi-structured data is that they provide most flexibility in expressing data, while the biggest drawback of these formats is that they incur extra parsing overheads and are not great for ad hoc querying. So what is the Spark SQL module? It is a Spark module for processing structured data, RC, Parquet, MySQL, Avro, and there are two different ways to manipulate that data by either using a data frame or a dataset API, or by executing a familiar set of SQL queries. And we'll cover these in detail. Since Spark SQL interfaces provide more information about both structure and computation being performed than the basic Spark RDDs API, they generally run faster and more efficiently. I should also mention Spark Session. It is the main entry point for all Spark functionality you may have multiple Spark sessions in a single Spark application. It allows programming with the data frame and dataset APIs, and it is represented by the word Spark, and auto-initialized in a notebook environment such as Apache Zeppelin or Jupyter. Internally, Spark session requires a Spark context and an optional shared state that represents the shared state across Spark session instances. Data frames are a distributed collection of data organized into named columns. Conceptually, they are equivalent to a table in a relational database or a data frame in R or Python. The API is available in Scala, Java, Python, and R languages, making it very powerful. They have rich optimizations, making them significantly faster than RDDs. The Spark SQL module allows you to create a data frame from a variety of sources, whether it's JSON, XML, Avro, ORC, Parquet, Hive and HBase, and there's a multitude of other sources that you can connect to via an external plugin. To create a simple data frame, all I have to do is point to my flights.json file in the examples directory, and I'll assign it to my variable path, and then using the Spark session, use the read.json point to that path to create my flights data frame. What will happen is that we'll infer the data types from that JSON file, and of course, it already knows the structure based on the formatting of the JSON file itself. To demonstrate different ways of accessing data in the Spark SQL module, I'll create a temporary view. I'll call it the flights view on my flights data frame using the create or replace temporary view. Let's go over two different ways of accessing data in the Spark SQL module. First, I'll go over the data frame API. For my flights data frame, I'm going to select three columns, the origin, destination, and departure delay. And I'm going to filter on where the departure delay is greater than 15 minutes and show the top five. With the SQL API, all I have to do is do the familiar select 
origin, destination, and departure delay from my flights view, where the departure delay is greater than 15 and limited up 5. Now, in both cases, what I'm going to get is the same result. What I hope this demonstrates is that there are two different ways of accessing and manipulating your data. You can either go with the more programmatic approach using the Data Frame API, or you can just write a SQL query. In both cases, you have the same result and the same performance. This way you can choose the API that you're most comfortable with. Thank you.